Hello, my name is Johan Falk. This is the second screencast where I talk about Drupal from a larger, larger perspective. And in this screencast I'm going to talk about Drupal being open source and what that means. Uh, open source is often connected with, well, associated with something being free. And I hope to make clear in this screencast that free, uh, as in free of charge, is not really uh, the important thing when it comes to open source. And it might not even be free, uh, for that matter. If, well, if you have downloaded, uh, well, no, if you have bought something like Microsoft Office or other uh, so-called propi proprietary softwares, uh, you have probably read license agreement or skip license agreement saying that you're uh, allowed to install this on one computer and you're not allowed to copy it, you're not allowed to dabble with the code and try to reproduce what we've done in this software uh, and things like that. You're not allowed to, to give this to your friends and things like that. Uh, open source is a way uh, to protest against this, I would say. Open source is um, uh, um, well a class of licenses, uh, just as these license agreements with standard software, uh, that uh, explicitly allows you to do some things with the uh, with the software. Uh, this can be summarized with the so-called four freedoms. <clears throat> Sorry. Uh, with free software open source, you are allowed to use, study, share, and improve the software. Here it's described as run, study, uh, redistribute, and improve. That's kind of the same thing. Uh, you are allowed to, to use it, uh, the software as much as you like. You are allowed to study it, to actually read the code if you want to do that and learn from it. Uh, you are allowed to send copies to your friends and to, to your enemies if you would like to do that. And you're allowed to, to modify and improve the, pro, uh, the program, the software. Um, and this is actually kind of a big thing. Not, not usually a big thing for uh, private persons who just use, say, Microsoft Office. Uh, but if you're uh, running a company and you're building a website, you might be interested in having that website interacting with your other computer systems that you have. And if the website is run by a propri proprietary software, something that you are not allowed to modify or study, then you are in the hands of licensed uh, consultants that uh, will charge you quite much uh, to uh, change the code and, um, and do the modifications that you want. And you might not even be allowed to do modifications that you want to have. Uh, open source uh, guarantees that you can do this, which is, I think, kind of important. Um, yeah, all right. Uh, we had a look at, at uh, this uh, blog post uh, briefly in the previous screencast. It says that Drupal is open source and it means that uh, you can try out Drupal, well, try to use it as much as you like. There are no license fees, which there are some kind of substantial fees for, for many other CMSs of, of the same caliber as Drupal. Uh, as I mentioned, there is no proprietary black box. Uh, you own the code that you have, uh, uh, that you are using. So you're not stuck with uh, uh, any particular developers or, or any particular software for that matter. You can migrate, you have access to the things that you have. That's, uh, I think, pretty important. Um, yes, as it, as it says here, it has a community on developers. I will talk about that in a separate screencast. Uh, and a bit about that in this screencast as well. Uh, open source is not always without cost. Uh, open source, well, um, for, um, from a legal perspective, you can actually charge money for an open source product, but the open source license uh, guarantees that if you buy it, you, well, if you have the source, uh, uh, the software, you're allowed to redistribute it, which means I will have a pretty hard time selling Drupal to you, uh, selling the code Drupal to you, uh, since other people can give it away for free. So usually it's no license fees, well, no, no initial fees for buying it, and there are no license fees for, for keeping uh, open source software, and that's kind of nice. However, there may be costs for developers and, and maintainers and, and people working with your software, just as with any other software or tool or processes that you have. And that is also combined with something uh, that is 
pretty often claimed about open source and that is that there is no vendor no one you can hold responsible when things break down and that's just not true what you need when you have a big website is a company that helps you run that website then when so, uh, things go bad or uh, you want to have things change you you turn to them and have your uh, well and the, they provide you with services uh, that can that can be done with proprietary software just as well as with open source software. With open source, you have the option not to do that because you can just use the uh, the software as it is uh, and not pay any licenses or anything. With proprietary software, you have licenses partly covering uh, these uh, uh, updates and and uh, the support that you get. But with open source, you have you can choose to have that or to not have that. Yeah, all right. So, um, that's about the formal parts of open source. Um, the informal parts is uh, kind of this. Drupal is um, maintained and built by a, um, by a community. Drupal is a collaborative effort, a collaborative project, and that is pretty cool. Uh, here's uh, an image from something called a code sprint held in London uh, this summer. Uh, a code sprint is a, a time where people get together and work intense, uh, intensely on uh, whatever uh, problems or projects they have that are Drupal related. Uh, many people say that this was the best uh, code sprint ever, or at least uh, on, on this scale that we had in Drupal, and that's pretty cool. Uh, it was an awesome atmosphere in this room, people doing great work together. And I think I have, well, yeah. Um, when Drupal 7 was released, uh, there was like uh, a bit more than a thousand people who had been working on that code uh, that, that was called Drupal Core. And that's pretty cool. There are more than 10 times that working with Drupal code in general. Uh, but I mean, a thousand people working on, on the same code base, that's pretty awesome. That, that's not something that many proprietary softwares can compete with. Yeah. All right. Okay. So another image here. Here's. Uh, I just wanted to show this. This guy is called Dimitri. He's, I don't know, half my age, and he just kicks my butt when it comes to know how to do Drupal stuff. And I really look forward to seeing guys like Dimitri and other people, guys and girls, uh, uh, learning more about Drupal and and doing better stuff than better things than I could ever do. And that's cool. Um. Yeah, I will talk more about Drupal and its community and things later on. Uh, I want to mention that in, in Drupal we have no official certifications. Here's a site called Certified to Rock that was created kind of as a statement about not having certifications. They, um, let's just uh, show you here. Here's the Certified to Rock start page and you can enter your Drupal uh, name here. And you get some kind of rating saying how uh, how much of a Drupal rock star you are, and I'm apparently on a five here, which I think is pretty good. And, and they claim here that if you, if we had in the Drupal community uh, an official certification, people would start working towards that certification to fulfill that, and that would more or less break down our community because people would uh, stop caring about the actual community and what we do together and more care about getting that certification. And I think that's pretty true. Uh, here's an image that is uh, a diagram that's pretty interesting as well. Uh, this is the distribution of Drupal people indexed at Certified to Rock. And you can see that there are quite a few people, well, uh, a large amount of people uh, at the lower region. This one is still a rock star, just for the record. Um, uh, but we have like very few people up here on, on the higher scores, which means we have uh, a few people, uh, well, a few hundred people doing quite a bit of work and a few like 10, 30 people or something doing uh, really great work with Drupal. Um, but we also have a lot of people doing a little work, helping every now and then to do stuff and their mass together uh, means that their efforts are pretty significant. Yeah, okay, that about certification. We don't have official certifications. If you meet a Drupal developer who says he's or she's certified in some way, um, they have, well, it's not an official certification. 
uh, we do have discussions about certifications and training programs and things. Here's something. I'm going to show you this image uh, on its own. Um, showing some kind of map over Drupal skills that you can learn and, and uh, move, uh, well, acquire and how they relate to each other and things. This is made primarily to have uh, some kind of training uh, guidance when you want to learn Drupal. It's not primarily made for any certification, though it can of course be, be used for certifications as well, uh, but there are no official certifications for Drupal. Yeah, all right, that's it for this screencast. We have talked about be, uh, uh, Drupal being open source and what that means. It's free. If you get Drupal, you own that copy uh, and you can do more or less whatever you want with it, as long as it stays free. And in the next screencast, I'm going to talk about the Drupal community and what that means and uh, how that affects Drupal. Uh, I'll see you there. Goodbye.